An individual never lives in isolation. It prefers to stay in association with other species or individuals of its own kind. Such a group of individuals belonging to the same species living in a given geographical area that share or compete for similar resources and interbreed only among themselves is known as population. For instance, in this forest, apart from this tribe, you will find an elephant, deer and tiger population. Although such populations interbreed or sexually reproduce, some groups of individuals that asexually reproduce, such as bacteria and fungi, also constitute a population. Populations of various organisms tend to cope with the changing environment for their survival. Evolutionary changes through natural selection take place at the population level. And so, population ecology is an important field of ecology. Interestingly, a population has certain characteristics or attributes such as birth and death rates, sex ratio, age distribution and population density which are statistically measured. However, these attributes cannot be calculated for individual organisms. Birth and death rates are expressed in terms of per capita. That is, by dividing the total number of births or deaths by the total population that exists in a given time period. For example, in a wetland, there were 100 typha plants last year and 60 new plants are added, taking the current population to 160. The birth rate is measured by dividing the total number of births by the total population, which is 60 divided by 100 or 0.6 offspring per typha per year. To understand death rate, consider a lake with a population of 25 fish, where 5 fish die a week. The death rate is calculated by dividing the total number of deaths by the total population in the fish population in a week, which is 5 divided by 25 or 0.5 fish per week. Apart from birth and death rates, another important attribute of a population is sex ratio. For example, in this tribe, 40% of the population are females and 60% are males. Moreover, at any point in time, this population consists of individuals who may belong to pre-reproductive reproductive and post-reproductive age groups. A graphical representation of the various age groups is known as the age pyramid. In the human population, the age pyramid shows the age distribution of males and females in the same diagram. In fact, the shape of the age pyramid reflects the growth status of the population and indicates whether the population is growing, stable or declining. Another important population attribute is the size of the population or the population density denoted by the letter N, which provides details of its status in its habitat. The size of the population is usually taken into consideration for studies on ecological processes in the population, such as the effect of pesticides or pollution, impact of predators or competitors with other species. Moreover, a habitat may consist of several populations of different sizes. In this wetland, for instance, 
there are only 10 kingfisher birds, hundreds of cutla fish, thousands of typha plants and millions of clemidomonas. Although the total number of individuals of a species provides the most appropriate measure of its population density, in some cases, measuring population density in terms of numbers is either meaningless or difficult to determine. For instance, if there are 200 parthenium plants growing under a single huge banyan tree, it would be incorrect to say that the population density of banyan tree is very low compared to the parthenium plants. In such a case, the biomass density or the biomass per unit area or volume of the banyan tree provides a meaningful measure of the population size. Thus, population density can be a biomass density or a numerical density. Sometimes, estimating the total number of individuals in the population may not be possible as the size may be huge or counting may take a lot of time. Think of the effort and number of hours you would require to count the number of fish in a lake. Under such circumstances, measuring relative density will serve its purpose. That is, the number of fish caught per trap provides a good measure of its total population density in the lake. In some cases, the population size of certain individuals is assessed without seeing or counting them. For example, the tiger census in our national parks and tiger reserves is often done based on bug marks and fecal pellets. Thus, population attributes provide important information about the organisms in a particular habitat and they provide the basis for further ecological studies and research.